Howdy, it's Matt, and in this episode, we are going to be checking our servo movements so that when we put our model into a stabilized mode, it doesn't spin on you or do anything weird. Okay, now this is a vitally important step of the process of setting up iNav, and the same for any other flight controller. And the reason being is that chances are the default settings within iNav are not correct for your model. Uh, and if you skip this step and you click like horizon mode, for example, then chances are the model will spin on you because the surface movements are incorrect. And also, before we go any further, I have something in my hand, which is a propeller. We are gonna be working on a live model. Remove the propeller or propellers from your model. We are gonna be, um, we won't be turning the motor on, but we've got a model on the desk which will be uh, have power in there and I would hate for anything to happen. Uh, so take your propeller off your model before continuing. And don't do what I normally do, which is just carry on and do it anyway. Uh, you, I've made a point here, I've taken my propeller off. It takes, what, like a minute tops to take it off and put it back on afterwards. Uh, so do take your propeller off. Now, before we go any further, you'll notice up on the screen, I've got the receivers tab open. Uh, and of course, my, uh, I've got the model over there on the workbench. We'll nip across to the workbench and check this over in a moment. But I do feel it's vitally important just to reiterate the movements on the transmitter. And if you've not done your receiver setup, there is a link to that in the top right hand corner for you right now uh, and with that said I'm just going to quickly go over the transmitter settings so we've got your let me put this on there so your right the roll uh, sorry roll aileron right and the roll value increases and then to the left it decreases when you push the elevator stick upwards so to go down the value increases and if you pull back on your elevator stick then the pitch value goes down your right goes up, your left, so rudder right goes up, rudder left goes down, and of course if you move your throttle it goes up and down. Also I'm assuming that you've been and got some flight mode set up as well. Let me just take a quick look at the modes tab. Uh, I've covered this in a separate video as well. If you've not seen that, that's in the top right hand corner again for you. Uh, crucially I've got one flight mode which has been enabled, which is Horizon, so let me... We've just clicked into horizon mode. That is vitally important. You want a stabilized mode. I would personally suggest horizon, uh, mainly because it's near the top of the list, you know? Uh, so I've got horizon, I've got a switch. So when I click on that on, it goes into horizon mode. And also down at the bottom, you'll see that I've got pass through mode enabled as well. So when you, when you get around to launching your model, the process is very simple. You're gonna launch in pass-through mode and make sure the model flies straight to begin with. That's the that's challenge number one. And challenge number two is get some height on uh, and make sure that a stabilized mode works as expected. There's also one tab which we need to be aware of, which is the servos tab. And this tab is gonna be like the focus of all of our attention here because we are very likely gonna to need to reverse one of the servos. I don't know which one yet, and uh, to do that, it sounds complicated, but it's just a simple case. I'm guessing, okay, I've not done this yet, and we'll get into the desk in a moment. I'm guessing servo number three will probably be needs to change to minus 100%. I'm guessing just because the uh, uh, FX61 is very like the uh, Wing Wing Z84, I'm guessing that's what's gonna be the case, um, but I don't know yet, but we're gonna go and find out. So with that said, I'm gonna go across to the workbench. Do note that I'm recording on the iPad and the audio quality is not gonna be so good over there as what it is back here on the desk and we're gonna be to and fro in from the desk. And of course I could have chosen a Wing Wings at 84 and it'd been a nice little model to show you, but I like to keep this real. We're gonna do this with a big Phantom FX61 so that you can follow like the journey along because that's the model which I'm installing iNav in right now. So let's jump across to the workbench and I'll see you there. So we've been to come across to the workbench and I wanna stress again, I have taken the time to take the propeller off the model. Please don't be a map which normally doesn't take a propeller off the model because we are gonna be uh, powering mains pack voltage to the flight controller board. Uh, and of course we've got a motor connected and these things really hurt. Um, I've never been hit by one properly. properly uh, so 
take my point around safety, take the uh, propeller off. So I've got my transmitter here and it's in pass-through mode. Uh, and I'm gonna go and connect up the main pack voltage to it. And I've got, I've got a noisy servo, so that's gonna sound out fantastic. So we've got a powered on. Uh, and we can see now is that if we move our aileron right, oh look, that one, that surface just over there is incorrect. In fact, let me just move this one up so we can balance it a little bit. There we go. So we'll see the stick movement. Oh, oh, they're, they're wrong. So if I move the stick to the right, the model's going down. Now this is the key point. We do not change the transmitter settings, okay? The transmitter, we've just confirmed, works correctly as far as iNav is concerned. What the issue we have here is that one of the servos is moving in the wrong direction. Now, which servo is it? So let me just move that stick. So, uh, look, it's, and I'm gonna move that out of the way. It's, Servo, what was it? Servo free on a flying wing. That one needs to be changed. So let's run back to the desktop remote. So I'm going to leave my transmitter there. Like I said, we're going to be to and fro from the desk. Now, uh, wh why do I know that servo is moving the wrong way? Is because it's our standard uh, surface movement checks. It's going in the wrong direction. Uh, so which servo do we need to? It was the right wing, which was the right wing. Let me go to the configuration tab. Uh, so actually, it's servo number four, which is moving in the wrong direction. Uh, we, we can see that on there. So let's go back to the servos tab. So servo four, scroll across, change the rate from 100% to minus 100, and then I've clicked save. Right, let's go back to the workbench. Howdy, it's Matt. Now I've actually been and coming back to the desk because I was just here editing the video up and you really couldn't see the surface movement. So we've been and changed servo four. We've been and reversed it. So now when we move the sticks on our transmitter, the, if we watch closely, the, and make sure you can see this correctly, is that when we move the stick to the right, we are expecting the, uh, uh, le the right end of one to come up and the left one to go down which is exactly what we are seeing. And if we do the reverse, fantastic, like so. And then when we pull back on the stick, we're expecting both of the elevons to come up. Fantastic, when we push down, they both go down. So do note, we did not change the uh, transmitter. We changed the settings in iNav. Now, we need to check horizon mode. So I've got the model already switched into horizon mode. And what we're expecting here is that if we think about this logically, a flight controller which gives you stabilization is that if the nose goes down on the model, if, you, if, you, if it was a human doing it and we saw the nose coming down on the model, we would put in some, we would pull back on the stick and we would bring our elevons up. And the same is that if we saw our model climbing and we wanted to correct that, we would put some down. Then obviously, if, we, if the model's going to the right, we would put some left in, and if we were going to the left, we would put some right in. I hope that makes sense. So, we've got the model in horizon mode. So what I'm now gonna go and do is push the nose down on the model. So let's do that right now. So, ah, now I really hope this is coming out on the camera for you. I've got the model pointing down, and both elevons have been and come up. That's exactly what we're expecting. Remember, if the model it was nosing down towards the ground, we would give it loads of up. We would pull back really hard on those sticks. That's what the flight controller is doing right now. If we turn the model up and put the no nose towards the sky, I hope you can see this. Both elevons are now pointing downwards to correct that movement. The obviously, the, the other two things which you need to check is right and left. So if we move the model to the right, and I hope this is gonna come out nicely for you, uh, is that the right elevon has now come right up uh, on there because it's correct in the model because it's on an angle uh, and the other one has come down a little bit. And if we do it the other way, the, now the left 
aileron or elevant has been come up and that is exactly what we expect from a stabilized flight mode. So let me just quickly reiterate that. I know I'm gonna say it over on the desktop again in a moment. If the nose goes down, we're expecting the elevator or the elevons to come up to correct that movement. Uh, and then if the nose goes down, they go in the opposite way and then right and left, just like you were doing it manually on the sticks to correct it, the flight controller is now controlling the surfaces in the manner which we expect. So that's happy days. Let's get back to that desktop. Fantastic. So that's it. I thought it was going to be servo three uh, and it turned out to be servo four, which is incorrect. So uh, I guessed and I guessed wrong. That's the point of going uh, and actually putting your model into horizon mode uh, and just checking all the surfaces are moving correctly. You'll also notice that I moved the sticks of the, the, uh, the sticks around on the transmitter and the surfaces were moving the wrong way around. That gave us a very strong indication that something was not, uh, not correct in the iNav configurator. And a big step here is that we did not change our transmitter. We confirmed the transmitter is doing what we expected it to do uh, over on the receiver tab. So everything moved as, as we expected. We didn't touch the transmitter other than to change the flight mode, okay? And then we came in, we went and checked the model. We saw that one of the servos was moving the wrong way. Now, obviously, if you're using a standard fixed wing model, which has got ailerons, elevator, and a rudder, and one of the servos is moving the wrong way, you would just go back, check on the picture on the configuration tab. So maybe you are using a fixed wing model. So let's go and choose a, uh, an aeroplane, for example. And let's just say uh, that servo number five, so your right elevon was, uh, aileron was moving in the wrong direction. Right, well, that's number five. Uh, and then you would go to the servos tab and then find servo five uh, and then drop that down and then change that to minus 100 and then click save in the bottom right hand corner. Again, just staying with some practical uh, examples. Uh, if we go to the airplane and maybe your elevator was moving the wrong way round, well, you know that's servo free and you would then go and change it on the servos tab. But we're using a flying wing and typically with flying wings, it's only normally ever one servo which needs to be changed, uh, but your setup might be different. Uh, and if it is, then you just change it accordingly. The last check which we did is that we then made sure that when we put, move the model around, uh, I wonder if I've got something, there you go, I'll use an ESC as an example, is that when we move the model around, when we pointed the, we put the model into horizon mode, we click that switch, and then we just check the surface movements. When we put, move the nose down on the model, both of the elevons came up, okay? So if the nose was going down, it needs to put some up stick in it to bring the model back level again. Then if we pointed the nose up into the sky, then both the elevons came down to, point, to bring the model back level again. Then when we moved the left wing down, we noticed that the right elevon came up. So extra air is gonna come across the elevon and then push that wing down and then bring us back level again. And of course, vice versa for the opposite side. So when we dip the right wing down, the uh, left elevon is gonna come up and then correct us back to a level flying position. So that's how you can set up and check and change if required the uh, control surfaces. And the big, big note here, number one, I took the propeller off. In fact, I'm gonna go and balance that one in a moment because I noticed there was some sellotape on it, naughty Matt. Uh, so I'm gonna go and balance the propeller. Take Maybe take the opportunity yourself to go in and make sure your propeller's balanced, but do take the propeller off. I can't stress that enough. Number two, we confirmed that the transmitter was working as expected in iNav and then we left the transmitter al alone. We did not like do any channel reversing or anything like that in the transmitter. The, the reason being is that the movements were correct in iNav and we needed to change the servo output from iNav to be input. In this case, servo number four to be reversed. And how did we know that it was reversed? We twiddled the sticks and we saw that one of the elevons was moving the wrong way. It turned out to be servo four. We went down to the servos tab and then we changed the rate value down here. Now, before I go, is that I wanna make this little point on here, is that if 
if you've got too much movement in your elevons, okay, or in your surfaces, then you've got a couple of options to you uh, available to you. The one, the first one, which I would say is that you can put some different rates within your transmitter. Another thing which you can do uh, is go and change the mid, min, and max points on here uh, within the iNav configurator. However, what I'm actually going to let you know is that I've never ever changed any of those values before for any model which I've used uh, with iNav. So I would su suggest that you leave those alone and just change the rate on that on the opposite side. And typically, it will be straightforward as changing it from plus 100 to a minus 100. And of course, if you've made any changes, remember to press save in the bottom right hand corner and then go back to your model and then check the surface movements again. Remember, nose down, elevons up, nose up, elevons down, right, and you know the process from there onwards. So with that said, from myself, Matt, this is classed as happy days. The reason being, we are now ready for our maiden. But before we go off and do our maiden, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna run through, give you like a quick run through of everything which you should check before you get to the flight line again. I would really hate for you to get foam snow and that will be the next part of this series. It will just be a collection of things. Have you done this? Have you checked that? Quickly just check that one. Do the surface movements like we've just been and done. Do they actually uh, work in the way which you expect them? And we'll just run across a couple of daft things before you go and throw your model just to make sure that your uh, maiden with iNav is a success. So from myself, Matt, I'll see you in the next part of this series. Cheerios.